What's up, everybody? It's Leo with the Black On Podcast. What's up, Bab, man? It's week two. Um, you know, we just played the Denver Broncos led by Russell Wilson. Um, and we took an L, first L of the season. Uh, man, what are your just initial thoughts? You know, let's just start right there, bro. Um, well, you know, uh, I guess kind of one of the first things that we were we were talking about when we got on the call prior to recording is that uh, – I feel like maybe we played a less talented um, defensive line and still got whooped and maybe played even a less talented offensive line and still got whooped. Right. Yeah. So um, it's just kind of weird how we're matching up against. Um, it's weird how we're matching up lines right now. You know, well, I guess one of the things that I would assume would have gotten better this off season is that we have a better run defense um, because I feel like we addressed the edge pretty well, but I guess, uh, you know, uh, Roy Lopez hasn't necessarily taken the next step forward, unfortunately, um, after having a promising rookie season. Uh, Malik Collins isn't necessarily one of the best run defenders. Um, so we're just kind of like hoping and praying. I remember in the chat you were saying, like, we don't really have like a true nose to stop the run. And we don't really have a true edge to set for a 4-3. So it's kind of like we're just, we're just hoping and praying. You know, they snap the ball and we just pray that we're in the right spot. That's a great way to put it because it really looks like that. Yeah. You know, no one's really like holding it up. I would say Rasheem Green gives us our best opportunity on the edge, mm -hmm. but they were kicking him inside a lot too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Grenard has done a good job of blowing some things up. You know what I'm saying? And as far as setting the edge goes, but, and then, I mean, I don't know, man. It's another, it was another one of those games where you're watching the linebacker group and you're like, what in, like, what are they doing? Like, I, I mean, I don't know if you caught this, but there was multiple plays where, like, Christian Kirksey was, like, completely running, like, almost – running himself almost out of the play, right? Yeah. So, um, I don't know, man. It's uh, it's tough. Um, my biggest thing – and, you know, I know a lot of people would disagree and they'll point it on a player and stuff like that, is that I truly feel – like the play calling was so weird at the beginning of the game where I, I, and I specifically point out the beginning of the game because I feel like, like at least the first two third down play calls were just so weird. Like just, mm -hmm. you're like asking your guys to just kind of like set up and beat the other guys. And like, we're not that talented. Mm -hmm. So how would we beat those guys? Right. But then also, I guess like, every NFL team, every other NFL team doesn't really do that. They just like, they line up and they, they trick you or they line up and they do some type of motion. They do something. Mm -hmm. Look, and look how dominant the Kansas city chiefs are and they still trick you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's just a bunch of weird calling at the beginning of the, of the game. And then, I mean, as you get to the end of the game, like, I guess, let me put it this way. If you're going to say Mills had a bad game, uh, the best comparison I can think of, which I, I he did, he he had a tough game. He did. But I guess my big comparison would be like, say you're driving in traffic, right? You're driving in traffic mm -hmm. and you get cut off one time. So now you're pissed, right? And then they break check you. And now you're like really pissed, right? right? Mm -hmm. Someone else does that again to you, right? And then at the same time, someone's driving on the feeder past you and cuts right in front of you. And then they break check you. Mm -hmm. how pissed are you going to be? You know what I'm saying? You're, it's going to be so hard to stay level-headed, right? Right, right? That's essentially what Davis Mills' offensive line and weapons were doing to him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A bunch of bonehead shit, man. I feel like, and this is kind of what I was saying before we started recording, the entire summary of the passing game today can be summed up in like the second-to-last offensive drive where Mills hits – Collins for a deep pass and then hits Cooks for a deep pass. Mm -hmm. And then Titus Howard gives up one of the most bonehead strip sacks. That summarizes the entirety of our passing game right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of potential and some promising plays. And then we shoot ourselves in the foot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just hard to, it's hard to watch. And it's like, I feel like he gets so much blame. And I mean, obviously, it's like I said, like, I believe, like, you know, obviously, 
we're in, we're not in the spot to be like, you know, this is a need. This is not a need. This is a need. This is not a need. But it's just like, you know, when it comes to fans, and this is why, like I say, fan, I'm glad that fans' opinions don't matter because they're looking – everybody seems to be just looking to blame the quarterback. But, I mean, like, I feel like it's because we don't like the quarterback because, like you said, if, if we have goddamn C.J. Stroud or anyone – you know, that comes down, you know, makes a good throw, you know what I'm saying, against a cover two, you know what I'm saying, you know, that first throw, like you just said, uh, mm-hmm. driving down the field, second last drop, the first, you know, corner route that he threw to Nico against cover two, great read, great ball. Second yeah. play, second play uh, over the middle to Cooks, you know, you know, throws him, gives him an opportunity to protect himself from the safety, you know what I'm saying? And then at that point, I'm feeling like, okay, like he's about to prove me right. He's about to show me why I like so I could go back and be like, this is what the fuck I'm talking about. And the yeah. second that happens, bro, the 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 most the most uh you know <laughs> you know the most protected offensive lineman in, in Texans Twitter history, bro. The I mean he he you know the guy that just you know I, like I said in the chat block like blocks more motherfuckers on Twitter than he does on the fucking field. Gives up a, a a a strip sack, and we talked about this. I think me and AD talked about this. I literally said he plays better against speed rushers than power rushers. He gives up a a, a rush to a speed rusher and Randy Gregory. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Gets beat outside really fast. You know, swipes his hand down, run, bends the edge. You know, as he's about to throw the ball. So I mean, like, I just can't understand. You know why we think it's all meals? You know what I'm saying? I just You know, and I mean, I'm not even saying, like, I believe we should draft a quarterback at some point. I believe that if there was a great quarterback in this draft and they thought that, do by all means. But I mean, like, man, I just can't – I, me personally, I I just hate seeing bad offensive line play, bro, or just mid-offensive line play. I want to be a team that that just bullies the fuck out of people. And, I mean, even, like, bro, like, I mean, you know, referencing the first two drives, I mean, like I said right before we started it, I mean – yeah, I get it. I get what you're saying, but at the end, like they, we ran a toss play. I mean, you, we're I, like if you look at us on paper, you would think that the strength would be the edges of of our of our, you know. I mean, you know, I'm not even gonna say that shit because it's not really yeah. strength. But but I mean, like you know, you would think everybody's whole thing was the tackles. You know what I'm saying? People in the media, oh TNT TNT. But bro, like what the like? I mean, I just don't I don't see it, bro. You know what I mean? And, yeah. You know, I, I just it's it's frustrating because like I mean what's what's crazy is that like I mean I said I thought, you know, I I this is like a three win type of team. We have a three win type schedule. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if we play perfect games, we win, but like let's just be real. I mean, we should beat the Bears. We should beat, you know, who else? The Giants. We should I mean, but shit, they're playing with I mean it's just it's tough, man. It's 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 not heartbreaking because I don't necessarily like it, it. It's heartbreaking because of the scrutiny that all these coaches and some of these players are about to go through. Because mm-hmm. you, you know, in spite of the fact that we're just not the most talented team, I just can't really, you know. I mean, people are screaming, "Play Lovey should play more, man!" But how? You know? Yeah, we don't have the personnel. Yeah. Aside from Stingley, we don't necessarily have the right personnel to run man. Yeah. And then, I mean, like you said, I think Rasheen Green, you know, uh, Rasheen Green, you know, Grenard. I, I feel like Grenard, like, you know, it, like the fact that we're playing them at the strong side so much and we yeah. have Hughes on the other side, to me, that's just not – it's not a good combo to begin with. It's not a good combo, especially when you have Roy Lopez as your nose tackle. You know what I'm saying? And Malik Collins at your three tech, and neither one of them are really good run defenders. I mean, you know, it, it's just frustrating, you know. And I think so, like, you know, people could criticize. I think Lovey, when you think about how handicapped he is from a personnel standpoint, the mm-hmm. fact that, like, we gave up 17 points and 20 points last week is kind of miraculous, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, man, I mean, I don't know, bro. No, yeah, you make you make a lot of great points. I mean, it, it, and just to kind of elaborate off of the point I made last time I was on with you guys, the additions that we made to the team um, bring out the the negative in the team again, right? Mm-hmm. You know, people will probably say, 
like Stingley had a really rough game, right? I mean, yeah, Stingley got picked on a lot. I could also see, you know, especially when Stingley gave up that big pass on third and 22. Mm-hmm. I feel like his assignment was like cover two, mm-hmm. right? They asked him to come down and cover a zone. Mm-hmm. And he had like an internal battle on the field. Did you see that? Where he kind of turned around and he was like, fuck, like I have to cover that receiver, Mm -hmm. but my assignment is this zone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then Owens just like wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? So that's just a tough thing. I feel like that's a product of the play call more than it's Stingley because Stingley was just trying to do his assignment, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. When Stingley is given that man assignment, we see what happens. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he, like shuts that shit down in the red zone. I thought he did a phenomenal job as we got closer to there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I had someone tell me like early in the game that like, oh yeah, Stanley is going to get baptized this game. And I was just like, like he's a rookie. So the internal battle for him is going to be like, oh man, like I could cover all these guys one-on-one. It's probably what he feels like. Mm-hmm. But because I have to play my assignment, mm-hmm. I'm probably going to give up some things on design. You know what I'm saying, uh, right? Yeah. If it, if if the if the Broncos felt like they could get down the field beating Stingley, that's fine. They didn't score on Stingley. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's like that's like the thing. Did he give up a touchdown? I don't think so. No, no, no. No, he threw a touchdown. He threw a touchdown to um to the tight end. Okay. Um. Yeah. I because I, I, I remember there was one that went under review. I don't know. My stream was all fucked up. But um, but anyways, uh, um, so so yeah, you know, people will point to Mills and point to Stingley. What's really weird is I'm kind of seeing people that are kind of like preying on Stingley's downfall. That's that's so weird to me. You know, what I'm saying like, mm-hmm. like like why? I mean, you wanted Sauce that bad, or mm-hmm. or what's your alternative? You know, what I'm saying what? Yeah, well, to me, yeah, motherfucker should have drafted Evan Neal. You know, especially now. You know what I'm saying? God damn. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, you know who, you know who's playing on a winning team right now? Fucking yeah, Evan Neal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who's yeah. not gonna fucking give give up that goddamn sack to Randy Gregory like that? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Good yeah. grief. Good grief. Yeah, no, but that's okay, man. You know, and and does does Titus Howard make some good blocks? Yeah, there are some times that Titus Howard does make some good blocks. Yeah. Are they in in super key parts of the game? No, they're just like a fucking uh, um, second and eight in the middle of the second quarter or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But then whenever it's like, I don't know, what was the play? Like, I don't know if it was a third down again this game, but I remember the third and twenty third and twenty two in the first game mm-hmm. where he let a three man rush by him. You know what I'm saying? Just little shit like that, man. It's so weird. And, but, <clears throat> anyways, yeah, a, a bunch of bonehead shit. I mean, the Broncos are coached by a fucking bonehead right now. That's for sure. I mean, that's a dog shit, like coaching staff, whatever they're doing. That's weird, man. Mm-hmm. They got some weird shit going on. And the fact that, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I, I can't believe we lost the game because of how bad the the Broncos were coached this game. But um, I also can't believe the Broncos didn't just absolutely smoke us because of how bad we were playing. You know what I'm saying? Just some of the bonehead shit we were doing. But um, I don't know, man, shit. We saw the same type of stuff from Mills when he has a second to throw or if he can throw on, uh, with the timing routes and stuff like that. He was He's on. You know what I'm saying? He's really hitting. Um that Chris Moore drop and the Brandon Cooks drop, I mean, that changes the game. You know, I, I think, did you think that that Mills pass to Cooks at the goal line was more of a Cooks drop or a bad pass by Mills? Um. Well, so, I mean, it hit him. It, it hit him in his hands. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I thought maybe, maybe the timing was a little off. It looked like I got to go back and watch the play, but it seemed to me like, the ball got there quicker than Cooks thought it was. And then yeah. I mean, he just – it was low and outside. And, I mean, you know, those type of passes, like, you wouldn't want to miss that inside because that's yeah. an easy pick six. And you definitely wouldn't want to miss it high and inside. So, I mean, I'm – you know, could it have been a better ball? Like, you know, I guess so. But, you know, um, 
I mean, I, I would think that, you know, Cooks is a veteran receiver. Like, Cooks has to make that play, I, I would think. You know what I mean? So, um, I'm asking Mills to have better timing in this game is mm-hmm. such an ironic thing, mm-hmm. you know, because he, like you said, he's getting smacked in the fucking face almost every other play, right? So, I mean, I don't know about you, but if I'm just getting slammed every play, mm-hmm. one of the first things that's going to go for me is my timing. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm going to feel like I need to do shit a little bit faster, right? right? Mm-hmm. And so, like, yeah, that was just such a fluke play. I mean, in reality, where do you put that ball on a better place? You know, a foot higher. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Is that where you put it? High? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mills threw it open, yeah. technically. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mills threw it open. Mills threw it to where the defender wasn't going to get to it. Right, right, right. And, and I really, you know? yeah. One of the things that blew me away is they put Driscoll in to run an option in the red zone. Yeah. Why, why are you taking the ball out of Mills' hands in the red zone? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He he proved that he was extremely efficient in the red zone last year. Well, well, yeah. you know, you know what it is though. I mean, not to cut you off, but you know what what it was what it, it is and and why it should be really really concerning is that we know what's gonna come in on. We know what they just because they want to run the ball down there, but they mm-hmm. know at the end of the day they're not gonna be able to run the ball without any type of deception. <laughs> you know, they know that. That yeah. they're not gonna be able to just outman the defensive line, which, like I, we said, coming into this game, they had their their nose tackle was about the size of Roy Lopez. Their two three, uh, their two, um, you know, what I'm saying defensive ends, you know, three four defensive ends were like 280 pounds. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like I just can't understand why we could not just at some point, like you know, I mean, I mean. I feel like it was just more of an admission, like that we know we can't run the ball. You know, we have to really make it, the number the numbers even in the run game to to win. And I mean, to to me, it's like you said at that point. Then I'm gonna live with Mills. I'm gonna live with like Pierce. You know, running that bitch like just straight up. Or I'm gonna live with Mills. You know, what I'm saying doing what he does best, which is supposedly playing the red zone. I just you know? don't understand why. Yeah. Why doesn't – so maybe you can answer this question, like, on the side of the Texans and then on my side as well. Why doesn't it make sense for the Texans to line up three receivers, a tight end standing up, and Damian Pierce in the shotgun from where they were at on the field right there? Why – is that not just the formation that you run street or sorry, three straight plays out of? Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you try to run the ball in out of shotgun because everyone's all spread out and you're going to have the defense in the nickel. Mm-hmm. Right. And then the tight end can come down crash block. He, you could run a counter out of the shotgun. Right. Yeah. Um, you could run just straight up slants with everybody. Yeah. And saying you could, throw a quick out to a tight end or a quick out to Pierce. You Mm -hmm. could run a shovel pass. You know what I'm saying? Like you could do so many things and Pierce is good at breaking tackles, right? So he's at least going to get you a few if you can just make sure that no one dives a gap or something, you know, but if if someone's showing that they're going to like blitz a gap, Mm -hmm. shouldn't a slant over the middle be open? You, You see what I'm saying? Like, why is that not just kind of like the default thing down there? I feel like, I feel like that puts you – that is like a formula for success even with the personnel that you have right now, yeah. right? Like multiple times Collins got open on an underneath route like really well. Like he did a really good job separating really fast, right? Um, I mean, hell, Chris Moore is pretty good at that, you know? Like you have enough pretty good talent to run successful plays out of that formation, right? It, it's just so weird that – they chose gimmick over something that seems so obvious for me. But I mean, what do you, what do you think of that? Like, like, or what, what's, what's, cause that's, that feels obvious for me. Right. My bad, man. No, you're okay. Man, I mean, I don't fucking know. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, bro, I mean, I'm just, I'm looking at it, bro. Like, 
I'm looking at it like, you know, we can't run. I just, I just feel like it's just so hard to say because, like, at the end of the day, I can't fucking say what the fuck they are supposed to do in it. I mean, I guess like, I, I just can't fucking say. I mean, I, I, I agree with you, bro. Like, you know, that I think, and and if they're worried about their offensive line. Like they couldn't run plays out of out of that formation because of their offensive line. Mm-hmm. I understand, but like you should be able to do something fast that counters that, or like at least gets the tempo in your favor, right? Yeah. The thing that bothers me is Pep is wanting to win the way that he would like to win, rather than the way that's working. But like that's what I'm saying. Like, I, what the fuck is working? I felt like straight up power run plays were working most of the time. Right, so Pierce, what did Pierce average over he four averaged, yards? Of he averaged four point six. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why don't you just why don't you just cut the shit and run it on first and second down and then pass it when you need to? And that's that's another thing too. I mean, you know, why come out in like a bunch wide set? You know, what I'm saying like that <laughs> with Driscoll in there. So now, you're like, you literally just told the whole damn world what the hell you're doing. Yeah. I mean, like, to me, it's just kind of like, yeah, I mean, you know. I mean, how do you expect Davis Mills to succeed when – so, I, I mean, I I just truly feel – okay, so, like, my whole thing, I guess in order to, to understand my point of view of everything, mm-hmm. I, I always think of things like – like from a leadership standpoint on down, right? So like it's Pep's responsibility to get the offense in the right position, right? Mm -hmm. So like I think about like my days as like a classroom teacher, you know what I'm saying? Like if my class was going to be successful, it starts with me, obviously. Mm -hmm. Like if my class is going to be successful, it's my job, right? right? Mm -hmm. And my philosophy on education has always been, it's my job to teach and never the student's job to learn, Mm -hmm. right? It's never a student's job to learn, Mm -hmm. right? So if, if someone's in my classroom is not understanding something, I have to change the way I teach it in order to get them to understand it, right? Because that's my job, mm-hmm. right? So in this case, I feel like Pep is being like, like almost stubborn. He's like, this works mm-hmm. and we're going to do it 20 times a game. And if it fails 19 times, well, God damn it, that's because our team fucking sucks. And now we need to draft a quarterback. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we gonna find that out, you know. What I mean, but but I mean, I mean, think about it this too. I mean, and uh, I mean to be devil's advocate to that though, like. No, I'm not saying that we nah, need to draft a quarterback. No, 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 no. I mean, that's a whole other thing, and I know that I already know where you're coming from with that. It, it's just like. To, to, to go back to that shit, though, like, I mean, did you see we didn't do any three tight end sets in the red zone either, really, at all, either. What and worked was, what worked in the first game, we didn't do it in the second right, game. Right, and then it was so interesting. It was like it was like he heard the cries and came out. Like, the first thing that we saw in this game, pretty much, pretty much the whole first half, pretty much was all shotgun. A lot of it was shotgun, right, I would say. At least the first few drives, I think a lot of orbital motion. You know, what I'm saying completely look completely different than what we saw. You know, what I'm saying in the first yeah. game. You know, and I mean it's just like okay, like I like that. I like that. But like at the same time, you know, I could I didn't see any like as and I know I gave him shit. You know, because everybody's trying to act like he's goddamn Travis Kelsey. But I didn't I didn't see and I know they was gonna defend it differently, but I didn't see, you know, I, I just I have to go back and watch the all twenty two and watch the game again. But what the hell like how was OJ Howard like what was his impact in this game at all? Like who do we have that can get open in the middle of the field at all? Like it's like if Cooks ain't winning his route, like when shit hits the fan, if Cooks ain't winning his route, then Davis has to make a tough throw to anybody and somebody has to make a contested catch almost every fucking time and it's just like to me you know it's it's just hard to say you know and I, I think yeah. honestly you know people were saying I think in the space yesterday that you know the quick passing game but I feel like to for us to have a better chance at winning this game 
Pierce would have had to have 30 fucking touches. Or, you know, or something like, because he was, he was, you know, I, I just, I can't really say, you know, it's hard for me to say what exactly, you know, needs to change. I'm just not confident in just the overall talent in this team. I'm not. I confident. think the, the, the numbers prove that you could have lived and died by the, the power run. Yeah. This game. Like if you would have just ran Pierce to hell. I obviously you would have an, you would have had a better chance at winning than you know whatever the fuck they were trying to do with the passing game, right? Listen, also, man, is it is it really is it is it really worth running him into the ground his rookie year when the plan is like I think this is a three year plan, you know, yeah. I mean, starting from last year, really like you know from this year almost, you know, like yeah, think- you're like you're like in you're like in like year point two five. Yeah, of the plan. Like the stage, yeah. One thing that I'm happy that happened is that the running game obviously was better. It was better. It was better. It was way better. And I was anticipating that benefiting the uh, passing game. Mm -hmm. But is everything one read? I mean, uh, is that the the play design? Do you think that's the play? Because it's the same shit we saw in the preseason, right? Right, yeah. I mean, I've heard, I've heard people say that about Mills before, you know? I heard people say that, it, like, there was this there was this one guy last year that said that, um, you know, he felt like Davis Mills, six, like, he was way successful when he's reading one side of the field almost. You know what I'm saying? And, mm. you know, and I mean, when you look at some of his best plays, like, you know, that kind of happens, you know what I mean? Like, you know, that that just that that kind of flood concept on the la- on the, you know what I'm saying, on the right side of the field. Like on the last second to last drive, whatever to Nico, like, you know. And then he does like good things where he kind of looks off the safety and then throws it to the middle of the field. But like, yeah. I mean, you know, man, I mean, at the end of the day, like it, it's a very predictable offense, not only because of that, but just because there is no strength. Yeah, you know man. There is no strength. Sometimes having a strength can help you address the weakness. Like you know what I'm saying. But like it's like the weakness is so fucking weak that, mm. that like there is no way to like we know like you know was like I mean Nico had up until like the last catch that was like 20 yards, bro. What the hell was he doing? He had 30 yards the whole game. You know? Yeah, he, it, it was a crazy stat, man. Like like Mills was super successful going to like the check down and then uh um cooks early in the game but he was like one for four going to collins and like most of those were going to be big plays or on third down or something Mm -hmm. you know i'm saying and it's like what it's like it's like man they are like i just feel like it's a bunch of predetermined shit but it's like i almost feel like I don't know why, man. I'm not trying to put on my Mills goggles or some shit like that. You know, I'm I'm like, I'm just kind of riding the hype. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I try to stay excited about Davis Mills. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, like, my bias towards him. But, mm-hmm. you know, damn. I mean, was the Burkhead play, like, designed to only go to Burkhead? Like, that wheel route or something? Or, like, because I'm just not understanding, man. Because, Yeah. I don't know. It's weird, dude. I, I mean, it, you, it, you said you said there was no strength of the team, but I I do think on by offense, the end, on by, yeah 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 on offense. But I think by the end of next week, we're gonna see that the power running game is the strength. Yeah, yeah I but mean, yeah. we're not gonna be able to run it off the tackles. I mean, no. and then, you know, I mean, it's it's you know, and then at that point, like, like I know Damian Pierce is a strength. But, like, how does Damian Pierce, you know, get, like, you know, how do you take advantage of him, of his strength? It comes down to the line. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And like, and then on top of that, bro, it's like that I don't think that – I don't think that they're going to give him 20 touches a game this year. You know what I mean? And I don't think that's a bad thing. It just makes it hard to win. You know what I'm saying? But, again, like, you know, I just think – and I know, I guess it, it might – Maybe it's pessimistic, you know. Maybe people think I'm pessimistic when I say shit like this. But, like, I just look at it like at the end of the day, 
we're just trying to find out who can we move forward with on this team. And I think like if we, if, you know, if, if we find a few guys that, you know what I'm saying, we feel like can be on a championship roster, bro, you know, this year and the next year and the next year after that, eventually we'll have a championship type roster. And that's kind of how I look at it. Like, honestly, at this point, I feel like Damian Pierce is showing a lot of signs that he can be very good. I mean, we know Brandon Cooks, you know, and then to be honest with me, um, I think Davis Mills, and I'm going to say this, bro. I think Davis Mills can be a good quarterback, but the obstacle that he has to face in this rebuild is so fucking vast that yeah. even if he is a good quarterback, we're going to have a chance probably to draft someone of his caliber, you know what I'm saying, or or better, you know what I'm saying, in the next two or three years just based off of how the fuck the team is going to perform. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Before you have to re-up on his deal. And that's what I've said from the beginning. It pisses off the mill size. It, I'm about to call him up. It pisses off the mill size. It, it piss, and it pisses off the fucking, the nasty nine. That's what we call him, YouTube, the nasty nine. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, I mean, it's just, I, I, I can't really, I mean, on defense, you know, I, I feel like I'm just at a loss for words because it's like, fuck, like, how do you make sense of this shit? I think Derek Stingley, you know, shows a lot of promise. I know he had a tough. I'm game. not worried about Stingley. Yeah. I don't know about you, man. I don't. No, I'm not. I mean, no, no. It, a Stingley could get burned for an 80 yarder, but yeah, if I'm he not goes sure. and, and then he goes in the in the in the damn red zone back to back to pass pass wow. breakups. Yeah. Like it's what fine. the fuck? You obviously and, see what Stingley Stingley is a lockdown corner. Yeah. In the red zone. Yeah. And I mean, and, and man, and man, you know, and then like, it, it like we already have proof of it. Yeah. They, yeah. They're, it, it, what is there? Three plays where he has pass breakups in the goal, yeah. that, like in the end zone. And they, bro, they, and they, they was like, what was crazy, bro, is that you could tell that they went into this game wanting to test him. You know what I'm saying? They threw a fade route to him. You know what I'm saying? The play before the, the pass breakup, you know what I'm saying? Where the dude was out, they literally was testing him. And I mean, he played. I think he played decently, especially in the red zone, like you're saying. And, and another, Sutton, Sutton is six four, right? Exactly. Yeah. And um, and and, and you know, Stingley tackles well. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? All, outside of that, um, Jalen Petrie, you know, oh, I'm, yeah. uh, you know, obviously played well. And then you know, I think like we have good guys that I think can be rotational players on good teams. Like I think Grenard, you know, like Grenard to me, um. Grenard had one big play, and that was that sack that on that play. I don't know if it was a play action RPO or fucking I don't know. Uh, uh, but yeah, he got that that sack tackle for loss shit. Um, you know, and, and then outside of that, you know, as far as young players, I we haven't seen Harris yet. I think he will be a great addition. We haven't seen um, what's my boy named Wallow yet. I think he will be an upgrade. But I mean, you know, for me, that's what that's what this year is about, you know. Tavier Tavier Thomas has yet to be seen this year, but I do think yeah. he, he will be a good addition to have and, back. And then that's another thing too. I'm glad you brought him up because I forgot. Like, I mean, when you have Tavier Thomas back, people are talking about why can't we play man? Why can't we play man? When you that's have Tavier, yeah. when you have Tavier Thomas back, we have more team speed. You know, when you have Wallow and Harris back, you know what I'm saying? We we're, we'll be faster. So like. I, yeah, we'll be faster. So, like, then we might see. And I mean, think about how much love he changed last year. I mean, you know, if they're seeing that Stingley, like, look, even that play that you said that you that we talked about earlier, where he did a damn circle because he was self conflicted. They're gonna build the defense, like, like, and that's another thing too. They're gonna build the defense around the strengths of the team. So, like, there's no guarantee that we will be playing cover two by week six like like that you know i mean I the should... hey the browns lost too yeah they lost yeah yeah so they're one and one we're oh one and one i mean we just you know i mean like i said bro like i think and, and it was like like I, like I was saying from the beginning people were wondering why you bring back the kirksey why you bring it back uh you know who who just name name some names kirksey uh um, kamu uh you know brit um insert yeah. any fucking 
vet that that like you know Conley. Um, it's because that two tough, two tough games, you know, where we did not win. You know what I'm saying? I'm not worried about Kirksey and them coming into practice this week. You know what I'm saying? I'm not worried about them, you know what I'm saying, like being assholes. You know what I'm saying? I'm not worried about how they're going to act when they lose their jobs this year to Wallow and to Harris. I'm yeah. not worried about that shit. You know what I mean? And, and I think, like, having people that – can't stay upbeat during a rebuild is just it's just it's just really invaluable you know and like bro next year it's like I always say bro and I know it's way too early to talk about the draft but like next year bro we're gonna win these games next year yeah. we're gonna, you know like if Pep goes out there and he has two to three receivers with Mechie coming back that can all beat man and and we improve the interior line again, and we have another running back to spell Pierce where they can still call power runs back to back to back to back to back because we have two fucking runs. Yeah, we we wouldn't be we wouldn't be talking about needing a quarterback. We wouldn't be talking about we wouldn't we wouldn't be we wouldn't have lost this game. We would not have tied last game. And those are like I'm not saying that we need to go like revamp the whole team in one off season. I just think if you just go get those pieces, that's that's a few extra wins and then you you back that draft up with another good draft then we have had three drafts that like really by that time really have transformed the team so like yeah. I, you know it is what it is i know that it sucks to lose but i mean the truth is is that we can't really judge pep now you know what i'm saying we can't really judge lovey now you know what i'm saying mills the truth i mean the the, the sad the truth on everybody's point is that is he gonna be the franchise quarterback? Um, we don't fucking know. <laughs> he doesn't. He's not dog shit. Yeah, he he hasn't even played seventeen games, right? I mean, he shows like like you know, I mean, bro, like let's just face it, bro. Like if if we go five and twelve next year, and we have two first again, mm-hmm. and you know what I'm saying, and you know, like. And Caleb Williams is attainable, you know what I'm saying? Do you make that move? You know what I'm saying? I think that it's feasible because, like, you have fuck. I mean, Mills's contract is coming up. Yeah, it just is what it is. You know, it, you know any of these guys, and I know that they haven't played but one year, but it is. It just is what it is, man. I mean, the team is going to be constantly changing, and I know, like, it's crazy that that we've been like it's what makes this whole situation crazy is like we went from being a a, a few plays away from being really being an AFC title game a half away from being an AFC title game to a three win team with no first round picks you know what I'm saying so it it, it, you know it's shocking but man I mean at the end of the day bro like you know it is what it is I'm you know I'm gonna stay the course and I mean, mm-hmm. I, I believe in what they're doing. It's just hard to see the plan right now. It's hard. It's hard to you know cheer when your team is you know not projected to win that many games. You know, but yeah, that, that's, I'm sorry, I'm off my soapbox, bro. No, no, you're all right, man. No, you make great points. Yeah, it's interesting, man. It's I I feel like uh, in back to back games, I can see how they would they could have won the game. Yeah, you know. So that's tough. It's tough to see, you know, and then it's tough to see that what worked for us this game Mm -hmm. on offense, like power running, is what we needed last game. Mm -hmm. And probably what's going to work for us next game is what we would have needed this game is some Uh successful passing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we might fuck around and put it all together. You know what I'm saying? We we really might. It's two games, right? Mm -hmm. So – at least they showed that they learned from the first game. Yeah. And they stopped fucking around and they played the 15th overall pick in the draft all game. And yeah. he was good. He, he played, played good. good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. a lot of runs that worked were right off of him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we got the Bears next, you know? So. I mean, we could fuck around and whoop the Bears, but, you know, uh, we. We just got to see, you know, and, and how much does the Bears count towards the season, you know, whatever, you know. But, you know, I think 
how much of this team is going to be the same going into the next season, you feel like? I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think uh, – I mean, shit, let's just look at it. I mean, I'd have to pull up the roster, but – I mean, I feel like I feel like most of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I think, like, they're going to keep what, – what I what I see them doing is, like, they're keeping a pretty big um, – pretty big presence of veterans and mm-hmm. they're going to add in. So how many picks do we have? We have eight, like we have 11 picks. We know he's going to trade up. We know we're not picking 11 players. So let's say that we're going to pick seven players in the draft. So you you'll, have, you'll have, you'll have two new starters. At least on every side of the ball and on mm-hmm. each side of the ball. And you know that like he probably will sign an offensive lineman, I don't, you know, he's going to make a couple key signings, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, I mean, the way he's going about turning over the roster, it, from what I've got gathered talking to people is not how they want, because a lot of people would like, you know what I'm saying, them to cut the old players, bring in a bunch of undrafted free agents. And I think that's just kind of the wrong thing to do, because, like, you don't want to, you, you have to have leadership. And I think, like, the way Casario is doing this is like, to me, he's trying to find the best, the most hopeful way. And this is gonna sound really bad, but like, he's trying to find the 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 ways to to have like the most hopeful three and fourteen, three and thirteen type of seasons. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, you know, like he's trying to to to, to build a, a young core, like, and I think like. The one thing that like I, I want to compare it to is like the Jaguars. The Jaguars had three years where they picked top five. They picked Fournette, they picked um Bortles, and they picked uh Ramsey, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and then you know what I'm saying they was in the playoffs, you know what I'm saying? And then a lot of those key players that were in that were, you know, were, that they had were like, you know, guys that they kind of signed, you know what I'm saying? And like so once those guys kind of – once they couldn't – they didn't feel like paying them no more and the locker room imploded, you know what I'm saying, and then nobody wanted to be there, they went from being at the top to back at the bottom. I think that what Casario is doing is that he's trying to to have the opposite of that situation to where, like, we have three good – three tough years, you know what I'm saying. We, we At that point, we have the high-end talent to really, really compete. But, like, the culture – is is stable and it's a and it's a it's an environment that people want to be in. Yeah, you know and like Fournette did not want to be there. You know what I'm saying? Ramsey did not want to be in Jacksonville. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the fuck happened with Yannick and Gakwe. I'm pretty sure it's probably a similar situation. And Bortles just ended up being a a, a miss in mm-hmm. the end. So like I think that like there's a lot of different elements that you know, like a lot of people and fans don't look at, like they look at how can we get to winning now? But I think that like from an ownership and front office standpoint, you know what I'm saying? Before you have a successful business, you know what I'm saying? You have to make sure the work environment is good for your workers to to be, you know, have, first of all, pleasure, pleasurable experiences working. And I think that that's what comes first before we talk about like how how can we make these little minor tweaks that make us 1% better, um, you know what I'm saying, 1% better for like one year. Yeah. You know, does that make sense? I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I totally follow you. I, I've been encouraged because we've been in both of these games, and I do think we should have won both of these games. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can see how we could have won both of these games. Um, as soon as Davis Mills stops getting shell-shocked, mm-hmm. um, you know, after he stops getting punched in the face and as soon as we give him an opportunity to get in rhythm, Mm -hmm. uh, which we haven't, I haven't seen a single opportunity for him to actually get in rhythm. You know what I'm saying? Like we're, we're just not calling. I don't, I truly don't think we're calling a drive for him to get in rhythm. We're going to see a different quarterback once we figure that out. Um, I feel like Pep has done so much just bonehead shit. You know, I, I really feel like it's some bonehead shit because and I don't know why that jumps off the screen to me at first. Uh, you know, every, I, it's no secret that I'm like a Mills truther, but like, I don't know why that's such a sacrilegious thing to admit. But anyway, um, but like, like uh, it, I, he's just not getting like, 
I just feel like it's not he's not getting an opportunity to put it together, but whatever. Um, the running game looks good. I think that's going to continue to get better. I'm cool with uh, I'm cool with um, Quisenberry starting. Yeah, he played. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, it was light years better than what we had last week. You know. Yeah. At anything we can get an improvement there is great. Um, yeah, the offensive line's just not there for what we want to do yet. Let's just yeah. be honest, bro. Like when you watch it, like like where where I mean, I know we've been. I've been hard on the tackles because their contracts is coming up. They're going to command a lot of money. But honestly, man, like, I mean, and it's a team thing. But, like, where do you feel like the weakest part? Like, do you think it's the tackles that are holding what, – what is actually holding us back just in general on the offensive line to you? It's always been a different unit. Mm -hmm. so the unit hasn't had an opportunity to communicate. Yeah. I'm saying – and then A.J. Ken's not a great guard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know I'm saying so. I mean, you're gonna count on AJ Can getting beat. Mm -hmm. Titus makes bonehead decisions in key moments of the game. Mm -hmm. You know, Titus is not clutch. Mm -hmm. Like he's not. He's the opposite. He's the dude who allows clutch plays to happen against the Texans. Yeah, like that's just who Titus is. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. I mean, like the the proof is there. I'm not saying anything that's not. I'm not – this is not a hot take. It's back-to-back -back weeks he's done this. You know what I'm saying? And then we have a rookie left guard, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, who's physically gifted and is going to be a great player. And obviously his best thing is power running. Yeah. He's a great run blocker. Like, that's what he is. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, he's a fantastic run blocker right next to a not good run blocking left tackle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then it's just a random – center backup center that we have in you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah. so it's just a weird mix i think as soon as they get a few games under their belts all working together it'll be better yeah and then finally they're letting damian pierce be the primary back once that unit of six kind of gets going it'll be better you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. we don't have a tight end who can pass protect you know what i'm saying like Pharaoh brown can't pass protect and he can't even help with pass protection like apparently you know what I'm saying? Um, it's just, you know, if you're going to fix the offensive line, you go get a really good center. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and maybe a center that's uh, pretty good in pass protection, mm -hmm. but can use a little bit of help in run blocking. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, Kenyon Green's going to give you some help in run blocking, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. Questenberry's going to get in the way but he's not going to get in the way of his teammates, right? No. I saw multiple plays where we're pulling A.J. Can and, and pulling uh, – um, uh, uh, what's his name? Jeez, the tight end. Uh, Brevin, Brevin Jordan. Yeah. yeah, we were pulling Can uh, Can and Jordan, and they're coming through the left side, and, you know, Pierce was running patient. Sure enough, you know, 11-yard gain, no problem, just running patient, you know? And, uh, you know, stuff like that it was available all game, though. You know, and we chose we chose to just give drives away by not running the ball more. It's just so weird. It's just it's just weird. It there was shit available. We were pulling. We were running well. We were running power well. Um, off the right and left sides. Mm -hmm. Uh, P Pierce started to get more and more patient. Um, he started to build momentum, and then we would take it away by throwing away some stupid fucking passes. You know, Mills was missing on the sideline a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot on the sideline. I don't know what that is. That's discouraging. Like, that's the most discouraging thing right there. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's whatever. I do think we're going to win a, quite a few games this season. Like, I do. I think we'll put it together. And I hope the thing, the biggest thing, my, okay, my, my last thing, my biggest thing, I hope they continue to find the issues and fix them the next game because they proved that they did that from game one to game two. Yeah. They, they, they replaced the left guard and center and they replaced the running back running game got infinitely better. Did they run the ball a lot? No. Yeah. You know I'm saying next game, hopefully they give Mills a, a chance to get in rhythm. Uh, they don't leave Titus exposed because obviously he can't handle one-on-one -on -one blocks in key situations. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and run the ball more. You know what I'm saying? Do what works. 
it's funny that we're just sitting here talking about the offense. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, it, it, the defense has done some great things. The defense has played, I mean, really uh, over and above, you know what I'm saying? What I think, what I think. And, and, and I mean, well, I mean, for the past couple of years, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Well, since Lovey has been there, you know what I mean? I think, uh, I think the defense will really just kind of be a, a, a easy fix. I think it sucks. That, that, it sucks that that keeps being the thing that we pump our highest resources into. With the defense, yeah. Well, I mean, but see, that's the thing. Like, like I think, you know, I think honestly, bro. Even still, I wouldn't be surprised if they invest in the defense again early because, bro, I think, I think they're two pieces away from really being like two or three pieces away from really being a dominant defense, like. Like I think if you go and get a, a, a really really good interior lineman and in mm-hmm. a in a in a really really dominant edge, you know, yeah. or even just a another dominant linebacker or even a corner, just some just if you go get one lineman that that wins every fucking one on one basically, I mm-hmm. praying for Jalen Carter, praying for Will Anderson, all that shit, you know, mm-hmm. so, you know, you could double up with 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 a with a greasy. You know what I'm saying? From Clemson, you could go get another corner. You could get another safety. But I think that once you do that, you know what I'm saying? Once the defense – once you – it's going to make you have to deal with Stingley and Petrie that much more. And I think yeah. at that point, then the defense can can take its major jump into being like a top half of the league defense. You know, but I it, it just goes back to, to me on the same thing is that, like, if you make that kind of jump, if you keep hat sucking on offense so fucking bad that like, you know what I'm saying? We can't sustain drives. We have 70 yards on the ground and like blah, 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 blah. It just doesn't yeah. matter. You know what I mean? So like, um, you know, I mean, to me, like you said, I think you, you, you really hit the nail on the head. I mean, you look at teams like the Saints, man, um, mm-hmm. you know, they built through the tackles and, you know, like you were saying with the great, with the good center. You know, yeah. and, um, I think that we need to get another, get a good center, a really dominant center, or or another dominant guard. Or I don't give a fuck. I, I mean, and that's one thing I'll say too. Like, you can't. I don't want to limit the options that they have, but but at the same time, I think you need another back too, because like I'm looking at the numbers also. Pierce has 15 carries, and nobody Pierce had 15 carries this game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wonder, is there like an Wait, how much did we run the ball? 17 times. That's fu- That's so bullshit. But see, that's, you know, that's, that, that's why we lost. Yeah. But, but I mean, like, see, it goes back to, to, to the thing is like, like, you know, here's the thing. I, I know that they don't want to run him into the ground. I know that they, they probably wonder. How much, how much, it's Miss Lame. I mean, I'm not, you know, it kind of sounds like I'm saying they're okay with losing. But I mean, like, you know, they don't want to, I know that they don't want to, to. And they obviously, bro, like, look, the next person that, that our next lead in Russia was fucking Jeff Driscoll. They did not mm-hmm. give, they didn't give Rex Burkhead any handoffs this game. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I mean, to me, it's like, you know, I mean, they're going to have to run the ball because you don't have fucking weapons, mm-hmm. you know? Um, well, you, you've got a weapon in Pierce, and I think, yeah, sure, you don't want to run him into the ground. You don't want to waste him or some shit like that, but. I know it's tough, but that's that's yeah. the only thing I could see. I mean, they're they're not looking at it. I don't think they're looking at it as like, you know, I mean, they gave, you know, that's that's all I can see. I mean, I mean, well, you know what that tells me, bro. They're gonna draft another running back. There's gonna be high priority to get another running back. Yeah. You know, um, probably another running back that is a thumper as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, to me, man, like it's not like I know, like we had this super uber positive. Every anyone that like is a true black black on podcast truther will be able to know that, like you know, we predicted nine or eight wins, eight or nine wins. But like, I really, you know, not to go back on what we said, you know, 
you know, but I, I'm really just looking at it like I think that we're going to have a top three pick again. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I think um, I think that they're going to – they're kind of just playing to get a good eye on guys and get – and just be able to see that, you know, like I said earlier. Um, and, but, like, looking at this Chicago Bears team, um, they – they I mean, their wide receivers aren't scary at all. You know, um, they're – I mean, I, I can't really tell you much about their line. You know, they have a good tight end, I think, in Cole Commit. You know, their running backs are are decent. You know what I'm saying? And Justin Fields is Justin Fields. You know, on defense, like, they have Robert Quinn. I'm pretty sure, like Bab said, <laughs> like Bab said, I mean, Dominique Robinson has played well also at points, but – I'm pretty sure that in key moments, you're going to see Robert Quinn line over Titus Howard. A hundred percent. They have Roquan. Roquan is actually playing weak side, according to our lot, our, our lads right now, which is cool and makes sense in that defense. Um, you know, that's what Leonard played. They have Jaquan Brisker, Eddie Jackson, you know, um, Kyler Gordon. That I guess they're playing, it says they're playing Nickel, Jalen Johnson, and Vilder. Um, yeah. I think that, you know, we should be able to run the ball on them. And I think this yeah. is a more evenly matched team. I think that we have, you know, a couple playmakers on defense. Uh, I mean, I think that we match up better against them, kind of. I mean, you know, particularly, like, I think our defense should be able to make more plays, you know, on them than pretty much – Anyone we play, you know. If we can stop their running game, I'm not worried about defending against. Oh boy. Yeah. So, I mean, bro. Uh, you know, I think I think this is this should be our first win. Uh, it's not necessarily going to be an easy game, but I think we will win this game. Mm-hmm. I think this is a game that Mills should take personally. Going yeah. to a highly touted, you know, first round quarterback from his state. You know, yeah. you know, a guy that he was ranked higher than coming out of college. I mean, coming out of high school. You know what I'm saying? I think he should take this shit personally. Mm-hmm. And I think for the rest of this year, man, he has to play with fire because, um, you know, there's a lot of people that, that, that feel like, you know, they can upgrade from him. And, you know, I believe in him. And mm-hmm. you know, I, I think that, you know, if you put him in a better situation, I think he will perform better. But, man, uh, I mean – to see him also, another thing that I want to say too, I know before we hop off this shit, is like the same way that they're trying to protect Davis Mills, they might have to protect him also. They might have to protect Mills. The same I'm the fuck. The same way that they're protecting Pierce, they have to protect Mills. Mills took had 38, you know, passing attempts and probably got hit on fucking probably like half of them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you know. If you're going to give him a chance to be the fucking franchise guy, the first thing is keeping him fucking healthy. And, I mean, sadly, you know, this might piss people off, but it, I, whoever the fucking running back two is has to get some fucking touches because if yeah. you're only going to run – if you only want to give Pierce 15 touches, which, you know, whatever, if you only want to give him 15 touches, which, I mean – it's such an even number that, like, you know, it, it, you know, 15 touches, you know, he's not touching the ball no more. If you're going to do that shit, then Rex Burkett has to get the ball. Yeah. You know, because you can't – we can't we can't protect the quarterback. And, um, you know, it just is what it is, you know. Man, you got anything else to say before we close off, close off this motherfucker? We stated our case, man. All right, y'all, man, so – this is the Black Owned Podcast. You know, AD's on a cruise right now. So, you know, we just wanted to come back and, you know, give y'all something. You know what I'm saying? This is post-game. You know, we didn't watch shit. This is just raw emotion. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, man. I mean, hey, you know, like you said, bro, it's been very positive. It's been, I mean, ultimately, I think, it's been positive, right? I think we've had two positive games. They right? we didn't get the result we want, but I, I I mean I think as of right now I think we're playing more disciplined than we played last year, and um you know it just you know we don't have the top end talent that some of these teams have, you know um, we don't have you know but we 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 fought hard and I don't think we didn't beat ourselves we got we got beat, 
you know, Russell Wilson made a a crazy throw. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, our off- our defensive line got outmatched. You know what I'm saying? They had great running backs. I just think that we just got beat. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's all I can say, man. Everybody have a good week. You know what I'm saying? Like, comment. You know what I'm saying? All right, y'all. Peace.